Hello everyone, it's Brian Tucknot again. What a joy it is to be together again for worship. So in whatever situation you find yourself, welcome. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Today our title is New Treasures. So make space to relax, to be quiet, and to focus on being in God's presence. Come, gather before the Lord Jesus. Come from the margins of your lives. Come from the places where you feel outcast. Come from the inner blindness you fear to admit. Come from all that holds you back from fullness of life and call to the Lord for mercy. Father, we have come with a great sense of anticipation. We come expecting to meet you here. We come and we know that you will not disappoint us. We come seeking your face, longing to give you praise and glory. We come th that we might be made strong in Christ and renewed by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. So we sing or read the hymn, When All Thy Mercies, O oh My God. A link to a recording can be found on the Word document. A prayer of praise and thanksgiving. For the God who is our Creator, our Sustainer, and our Father, let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. For Jesus Christ, who is our Saviour, our Lord, and our Friend, let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the Holy Spirit, who is our strength, our power and our enabler, let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the world around us, which speaks to us of God and fills us with joy, let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our homes, our family, our friends, and for fun, work, and leisure, let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. For laughter and play, for tears and comfort, for peace and joy, let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. For minds that can learn, for things to discover, for new challenges to face, let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. For those who make God real for us, for faith to step out in hope, for Jesus who we can trust, and for God's Spirit who empowers us, let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God for worship and thanksgiving, for forgiveness and praise, for God's presence and power. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our prayer of confession. So spend a time in quietness. And in the quietness, we examine ourselves 
in the light of our knowledge and understanding of God. And we open our minds to how we should live. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to God and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal our pain and lift us up. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you make us whole and offer us a new beginning. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we share in the colic for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Our reading today is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. And the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up to the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things, Jesus asked? Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. And we sing together or read through the words of immortal love forever full. And again, a link is on the Word document.
What a lot of stories we have on offer today. An abundance of riches, we might say. I'm going to start with Jesus teaching to his disciples in the buried treasure and the pearl of great price. These are not all easy stories, however brief. Are we to hear them at their simplest and understand that the kingdom of God is so precious that it's worth doing whatever it takes to be a part of? That would appear to be the case, but can something as unethical as seeking to buy the field without revealing what we know of hidden treasure in order to get it at the lowest price and then to keep it for ourselves alone really be okay? That doesn't seem right to me. And can it really be okay to be so obsessed with the idea of owning the treasure that Openness and honesty can go out of the window. Again, that can't be right, can it? Then there's the pearl that is so precious that it's worth having nothing else beside. To sink everything one has into one desirable object, even the most beautiful and perfect pearl, could hardly be seen as prudent, indeed could even be seen as a crazy and extremely risky investment. What happens if the bottom falls out of the pearl market? Do we really need to consider such issues? I have to say that I thought about these issues and I'm still not sure what the answer is. The issues of wealth or lack of it could be considered fields of great controversy and it's almost impossible not to read our own meanings and assumptions into what Jesus said and about riches and poverty he certainly said a lot. I have been unable to find any passages in the Gospels where Jesus condemns riches. Equally, nowhere does he praise poverty. Remember, he had rich friends. He dined in their houses and accepted their support. Some of the disciples appear to have owned houses or boats. Renunciation of all possession is never made a universal condition for entering into the kingdom. So what does Jesus say about riches? The rich fool is not condemned for his riches, but for his foolishness in thinking that wealth was the aim of life and in forgetting to become rich toward God. In the Lazarus parable, the rich man is condemned not for his riches, but for his callous indifference toward the beggar at his gate. Jesus censored such selfishness in everyone. It was more evident in the rich than in the poor, but not more wrong. The power of wealth to do good, to provide hospitality, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to heal the sick, to visit the prisoner, to do good, even to lend, is a frequent theme of his parables. It is always possible to consecrate wealth by the way we used it. Employing people, buying and selling, banking and interest, 
All are mentioned without comment. Jesus' main concern is with our attitude towards wealth and with its right use. And in this he introduces new perspectives of compassion, service and an equality of response to need. Jesus points out how dangerous an obstacle to our spiritual well-being is the possession of great wealth. Affluence can make entry into God's kingdom infinitely harder, so much so that it may well be necessary in some cases for someone desirous of finding and entering that kingdom to strip themselves of everything just to make it possible. But poverty too has its dangers, just as covetousness can poison the rich with avarice, it can equally poison the, the poor with envy. With equal clearness, if not as frequently, Jesus warned against anxiety about food, clothing, hardly concerns of the wealthy, and of the future. These can imperil spiritual understanding and draw us away from God just as effectively as affluence. So Jesus would appear to be saying that compared with life under God's rule, in his kingdom, wealth or the lack of it are unimportant. Seeking that buried treasure, that pearl of great price is worth sacrificing all that we have be it little or much and doing everything that it takes even the craziest things to achieve such a goal clearly though it's no easy task whether rich or poor the goal is not easy to achieve. We need help to make the transition. Science calls it a catalyst, an agent of change. In the story about making bread, that catalyst is the yeast. I've never tried it, but I imagine that eating dry flour would be far worse than eating dry cream crackers. Our scouts were used to make very simple bread by mixing flour and water, rolling it in our hands and twisting it around a twig that we then baked over an open campfire. Not bad, but a poor taste compared with that of fresh home-baked bread made with yeast. The yeast changes the simple ingredients into something special. Like me, my wife Marguerite left school at 15 and entered an apprenticeship. She trained and worked as a hairdresser, but always felt that she should be doing something else with her life. The work she felt drawn to was social work, but with no academic qualifications, could see no way to achieve it. She discovered that the Church of England had a social responsibility department in the Chichester Diocese that supported a number of projects in Sussex. So she approached them for advice. A lady talked with Marguerite, saw her potential offered her the opportunity to explore this calling further by working in a mother and baby home and, if all went well, to sponsor her attending college to achieve the necessary qualifications. Marguerite's mentor was the God-given catalyst for change in her life. 
the means by which her talent was unearthed, developed and released. All of us have the potential to be changed into something special, to have the treasure, the talent within us unlocked, to become kingdom people. Our humanness holds us back, demanding caution about such a huge commitment. It takes courage to risk what we have for what could be. Dare we let go so God can effect his change in us? Will we welcome the yeast of his spirit and allow it to work with the basic ingredients of our lives to develop our abilities to the full? It's only when we each take that risk that the kingdom can grow within us and the love of God direct us in the appropriate use of all the riches he has given us. And so to our prayers of intercession. For the comfort and security of our homes, praise be to God. For those for whom home is a tent, a shack, a shop doorway, or a street pavement, help us to help them, Lord. For the ready ability of food and water, Praise be to God. For those who struggle to grow or afford food, or who have to walk far for water, help us to help them, Lord. For clothing for our bodies and shoes for our feet, praise be to God. For those who wear cast-offs, or go barefoot in the cold. Help us to help them, Lord. For the provision of schools and hospitals, praise be to God. For those whose schools and hospitals struggle to survive, help us to help them, Lord. For all these things we take for granted and more, Praise be to God for those who take nothing for granted because they have nothing. Help us to help them, Lord. Amen. And we share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we share together our final hymn, Father, hear the prayer we offer. Again, a link is on the Word document. And so our final prayer. Loving God, you have come among us this day. Reign in us and mould us. Forgive us and heal us. Bless us and enlighten us. That we may be renewed by your grace. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with each one, now and always. Amen. Take care, everyone, and have an enjoyable and peaceful week.